All right, good morning, everyone. So this week's, um, this week's education is about us as a group, but you as a person. And once again, it's education of me looking in the mirror, talking to myself at the same time I'm talking to you. So as I'm building the presentation, I'm asking myself these same questions and then having to confront the answers realistically. So um, this is today, what is your style costing you? <clears throat> what is your style costing you? So first we're going to talk about personal best practices. <clears throat> what do you do, <clears throat> that you do that you don't like to do, but you know is good for you? Who has an example? What is something you do that you don't necessarily like to do, but you know it's good for you? Sit-ups. Jason, sit-ups. I train, train, train. Training, okay. Guy, did you raise your hand? Oh yeah. For well, my business, because it's good for me, I just need to go to have a sanitizer, but I'm not doing it. Ah, okay. <laughs> Cold calling. Cold calling, okay. What best practices, so, <laughs> so these are personal, there are professional ones coming and that's good that we have a, a little prelude to that. So uh, what best practices do you do with frequency and you do well in your life? So Jason, it could be the sit-ups. I do the sit-ups and Michael, it could be the working out, right? So there are things that we don't like to do but we know is good for you. And then there are best practices we do with frequency and that we do well. And then um, tell me some benefits you get from doing those activities. Um, ment- I have like this like, mental like, uh, <clears throat> endurance mm-hmm. when I do that because I'm doing things I don't want to do. And when I achieve it, then I get that confidence. Okay. okay. Good. So the takeaway here is that we do things we don't like to get results that we do like. Now, in business, we do the same thing. It's the same set of questions, but in the professional best practices. So without his permission, I use Miguel's, uh, Miguel's, uh, Miguel versus Mikhail Zelyarazov, his uh, <coughs> character feature when we, did his, uh, <laughs> when we did his series about what a good agent and a bad agent looks like. Um, so what do you do that you may like to do and you know is good for you in business? You might like doing it. You kind of know you have to. You know, so Miguel, love, you guys know Miguel's theater background, so he loves doing this kind of thing. But what do you do that you might kind of like and you know is good for you? What's an example? We heard cold callings, what of them, David? Making video. Making video. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> What's another one? Disconnect for a little bit. Oh, very good. Because we have a loving hate relationship with that past, but it's important for your business. <clears throat> uh, it's just like Uh, in general, you know, to make sure that you kind of regroup, reset, think about it. So by doing that, Nuri, what are some of the benefits you've seen by doing that? Um, Focus, keep in track, right. Um, Achieve, finish this, and be able to see the bigger picture. That's really, really insightful. Thank you for sharing that. Because sometimes rest may seem like it's unproductive. But sometimes rest is a thing that actually precedes you being productive. I've used this example in the past where, um, you know, I, I congratulate my phone at the end of the day. I go, oh, you did such a good job today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug you in so tomorrow you can do another full day of work. But like we treat ourselves that way. We go, oh, you, did, you worked hard today. You know what? You can go to bed and go to sleep so tomorrow you can do it again. Well, that's not true. What we do is we plug it in so that in the morning it's ready for us to use the whole day. Yeah. We don't necessarily always treat ourselves that way, but we need that rest too. That's a great point, Uri. So we do things we may not like, but to still get results that we do like. And in the B&I context, we have best practices in B&I. So what do you do here that you you must like to do? You kind of have to like people to be here. So that's why I leaned into the must like a little bit. So what do you do that you must like to do and you know is good for you in here? What's an example? Networking, okay, in general, what's a more specific example of a activity we do as part of B&I? One-to-ones, what else? Exactly. Presentations. <clears throat> Presentations, okay. Maybe listening to CEUs or reading, those kind of things. What best practices do you do well with frequency in here? Who wants to shout one out for yourself? What's something you do really good in B&I as a member? Okay, attendance, great, what else? Anybody else? You guys, I see a lot of things you guys do really good. <laughs> prepare, our, our prepare our our ask for the week okay so what are some of the benefits of doing the things in bni well more business visibility referrals givers gain yeah embodying the idea of givers gain credibility <clears throat> building trust yes 
So we do things we must like to get results that we do like. We all join BNI to get more referrals, to get more business, to close more business. Yes or no? Yeah, yes, yes or yes. Um, and, but the thing is that our style can sometimes cost us. Well, I want to do it my way. I want to go to the gym and I want to lift the, I want to lift the barbell like this. Like, that's not going to help me. There's a method to doing things properly in your personal, professional, and in your BNI career, if you will that will actually advance the outcome that you're hoping to have. So the, the question for myself in, in all this is, am I doing the things that are going to generate the results that I want in here? So if I'm gonna do the activity incorrectly and I still expect the, actually, the same outcome as if I did it correctly, am I even being honest about what I'm expecting here? And the power of one is, what, the, the, that's why we have the power of one, is so that the things that we know work best in BNI don't require any style at all. They just require follow through. They require showing up and doing the thing. So by doing the one-to-one, -one, but doing the one-to-one -one in the method in which the one-to-one -one is set up to be performed, we can get better expectation, or have a higher expectation and a better result. Um, doing the CEUs, bringing a quality referral, inviting a visitor once a month. And that's why we measure these things. You know, over the course of 38 years now, 30, almost 39 years, there is a reason why some of these staple standard things are always still the same things is because no matter whether it's been online meetings, only hybrid meetings or in person, they still kind of stand the test of time. So as you're listening to today and I'm wrapping up, um, I just want you to ask, ask yourself, like, what is my style costing me in BNI? Am I missing opportunities because I'm putting my style ahead of the actual activity or the way the activity should be done that's gonna generate me the result that I want? All right, then that's it. Thanks guys. Thank you.